Have you ever wondered uh, what it takes to replace a 75 gallon gas water heater? Well, stick around because today I will be doing just that. Uh, right here we have about uh, 15 to 18 year old Bradford White water heater that's leaky and I will be replacing it with a new Bradford White unit. Uh, first I will uh, disconnect and remove the water heater. Then I will solder uh, one inch copper threaded adapters, they're also called MIPs, one inch MIPs. Uh, so I can uh, use flexible connectors. Uh, that's not a record requirement because of the earthquake requirements. I will use those uh, flexible lines. Uh, then the, uh, I will reconnect the circulation pump. I will cut this pipe and then use the couplings to reconnect it. The pump will go in the same place. I will install a new gas connector, a new gas flex line, a sediment trap, and I will also put a drip pan underneath the water heater. Of course, I'm reconnecting the uh, temperature pressure relief align uh, all new water heaters come with the uh, pressure valve pressure relief valve that's already pre-installed and also we already have a uh, expansion tank up there that's uh, properly functioning so i'm not uh, dealing with that this time all right let's go ahead and take care of that now the very first thing is draining the water heater. So this is how I do it. Uh, you get a good hose, good long hose. You stretch down the driveway, make sure there's no kinks, make sure it's nice and stretched. Uh, and you connect it to the drain valve. Then you open the drain valve before you even shut off the water supply to the water heater. Now this one has been already shut off because the customer did that uh, some time ago today. Uh, but uh, every time I go to a water heater, if I'm the first one to put their hands on the water heater, I will uh, use the pressure in the tank, I will use the incoming pressure to get my um, water going uh, because sometimes they get clogged on the bottom, you really need that pressure to get your uh, drainage going. So once the um, hose is going fine, once you discharge the water uh, normally and it's running freely, uh, then you can shut off the water supply to the water heater. Now at this point, you need to disconnect the cold water supply line on the top because the water heater needs to be breathing, needs to be taking air from the top so it can drain down. If you don't disconnect uh, a line, either cold, hot, or open this TMP valve, the water stays under vacuum inside the water heater and it does not drain. So this is uh, uh, my advice on how to drain it. Uh, of course, uh, also uh, show off the main water valve to the house. Uh, make sure uh, you don't get any uh, water coming back to the hot water side because shower valves mix hot and cold and uh, you might be getting uh, water coming back to the hot water side. Usually there is no shower valve there. Uh, also sometimes people uh, open their faucets upstairs uh, and, and again hot and cold mix in the faucet and leaks back to the hot water line back here on top of the uh, water heater or uh, right the way you're working. Um, another thing is when you have a circulation pump, every time you shut off the water to your house, unplug your circulation pump. You don't want your pump to be spinning um, while you have turned off the water to the house. Uh, if the pump is spinning dry, it will burn out. It will just break. It will cease. So keep in mind, that's with any circulation pump. doesn't matter what. Alright, let me get on top of this water heater now. Also, these white blankets, they're trash. We don't reuse them. They're not good for your health. This is a fiberglass, so we throw them away. The new water heaters have the blanket pre-installed on the inside.
this piece of vent was not put together very well. It only had two screws on one end and the other end was just touched with one screw. We'll fix that. stopped uh, it's not draining anymore so I can proceed with the rest Okay, the fewer the cuts on these circulation lines, the better, the easier for your work. So I'm just going to disconnect the new end on the bottom. I will make one cut up there. That's it. Make sure you don't use the uh, the rubber rings, the rubber washers. Now I will reuse this piece here. I will use the T. I'm just going to replace the the drain valve. I will put the one that comes with the water heater, and I'm going to add another ball valve right here in the back. And I'll tell you why uh, later. It, it will make your work a lot easier. All right, it's time to put the water heater down. So I'm spraying some WD-40 uh, at the lifting cart that I have here. Ten years ago, when I was young, I used to put these water heaters on and off the platform just by myself without using any tools or anything. I used to just lift them up like this. Not anymore, I'm old. I have back pain. So now I'm using this lifting cart. on the top they are in my way
Hey. The next step is cleaning behind the water heater. Now is the time to do it. Also some water, there's some water on the platform, so we'll soak that water away with paper towels. Stay in the box. Every time you work on a water heater, start from the top down, that way you don't forget a step. Start from the water pipes, work your way down the straps, gas line, and so on. Follow that pattern and you will never forget a step. To make it easier, I'll wipe away the, the water from, from the pipe so I can melt the solder quicker. It's hot. Remove the uh, the solder bumps, so we can uh, sandpaper the pipe, clean it, ready to go. No, I could have went with the MIP fitting right at the end, right here, but then I was going to have an extra fitting there. So as I said, the plumbing is best to minimize the use of fittings. The fewer the fittings, the better for the plumbing. We'll use the reamer right here. A little bit.
So before soldering, the copper pipes and fittings should be shiny like this, free of any lubrication, uh, free of wet spots, no water whatsoever. So you can get uh, a good uh, solder joint. Clean the things on the inside as well. You should apply a thin layer, a thin film of uh, flux. Not too much, not too excessive because it starts burning out because black and actually uh, destroys your solder joint instead of helping you. To be on the safe side, I also apply a tiny film on the inside of the feeding, although you are not required to, but just to be on the safe side, very, very little. And then I go like this around the, the joint, the back of the feeding. All right, time to solder. So you should be heating right in the middle of the feeding, not at where the solder joint is going to happen, but away from that, uh, right in the middle of the uh, feeding, sometimes even towards the end of the, of the feeding, the, the goal here is to attract the solder towards to the uh, higher temperature point and that way you can get the solder flow into the feeding, between the feeding and the pipe and create a good, good uh, uh, solder joint. Finish there. Next thing, straps. Have you noticed? Both straps drill into the same stud. That's not right. So I'll keep one strap right here, and the other strap will drill into the stud somewhere right here. So you should have two separate uh, points uh, of bracing, not the same stud in the back. I need to find the stud here. There's always studs around doors, so it shouldn't be a problem. Just like that. Solder is uh, solid. 
go ahead and clean the, the flux. It's very important to keep, clean the flux after a solder joint because uh, that same flux will uh, eventually eat through the pipe and create a pinhole leak. So that's my theory. I have seen so many pinhole leaks that have occurred right where uh, someone did a solder job and didn't clean the flux. The flux is through the pipes. You can see the green spots. This is where pinholes uh, occur. So very important to clean the flux after the, the solder joint work. Another thing I do is flatten out the surface of the nipples. Make sure it's not sharp. Make sure it's flat. I think uh, we are ready to put the water heater on the platform and continue with the work. This is how I lift those monsters. if I can get the, the TMP line exactly the way it was without needing to modify it. Got that. Our next thing is uh, I'll unscrew this drain valve 
because this is where some other piping will go for the circulation pump. Spacer right here between the water heater and the wall, so when I put the straps, it doesn't have to shake. I'm right, going back to the top uh, because, as I said, you need to follow that pattern top to bottom. So I'll start with the vent, water pipe, circulation pump, gas line, drip pin, test it, and go home. All right. Let's see what we got here. These new 75 gallons are a little bit taller than the old ones. Oftentimes, there's work needed with the vents. Let me remove this piece. Okay. So I'll cut this halfway to make it work. For whatever reason, I like my older cutters better. Now, this is a 4 inch galvanized pipe and it needs to have 4 screws at each joint and I'll make sure it at least has three in a cross pattern okay. all right this is the time when I determine whether I'm using the, the short 18 inches supply lines or the long 24 inches ones and I think right here two 18 inches will do it let's be going get this I don't have the short ones I have the long ones so we'll use those and uh, another thing I do is I spray WD-40 on both sides of this thing because that way I get the, the uh, washer lubricated uh, and I get a better feeling for how tight it gets when I tighten it uh, if you don't put uh, any lubrication on these you just don't get the right feeling uh, it squishes up there and uh, you don't really know is it tight is it not tight uh, and this is when your supply lines, the lines leak you have to put the proper amount of pressure and uh, I get the best feel when I first uh, lubricate this. This is how you know if you have tightened them enough or you did over tighten them. So 
Once you come to a point of resistance here, then you grab the supply arm with your hand and you spin it around. So it should be spinning, but kind of difficult to spin. So this is how you know it's tight enough. If you tighten too much, then you cut through your uh, rubber washer and it leaks. So you should still see it spinning a little bit, just a little bit when you put a little force on it. Get to the circulation pump. Alright, those are the, the old brass fittings, but they are re reusable. Brass fittings are definitely reusable. There's nothing wrong with them. Only thing you might need to clean them inside a little bit, but brass fittings are perfect. I love them because they are reusable and saves you some money. They're expensive. Let's see how we're gonna build it here. I use this uh, blue monster tape. It has never failed on me. So you do one, two, three, four turns. Doesn't have to be too much. The thread should still be exposed. Not exposed, but you should be able to tell there's a thread there. You don't have to cover the thread completely. And once you put that, you're pretty much ready to go. But I like to add a layer of confidence by also putting some of this uh, paste. The white compound. You can do either one or the other, but of course, both at the same time are better. I don't want to go back and redo it. So what I'll do here is I'll put a, a, a shuttle valve first. And I'll tell you why. In a bit. When it comes time to turn on the water. First, tighten the feeling into the water heater so you get the feeling of how tight it is. And then, next, the ball off itself. You can do both at the same time, but this way you're in control.
and the original drain valve that was right here what happens is it just moves a little a little bit further up front Looks like uh, I'll have to add a little piece of copper up there. has to be two and a half inches. Those brushes are very handy for brushing uh, fittings on the inside, the three quarter and half inch fittings. This end is for half inch, the one I'm using for the three quarter. Uh, this mirror is a really, ha a really handy tool to look behind uh, in the blind spot of your solder joints to make sure you did good joint. Make sure you see the silver ring all, all around the pipe. And of course now it's time to put that uh, rubber washer at the circulation pump union. I'll lubricate it a little bit. Right now we are ready to turn the water onto the house, fill the water heater up, then uh, discharge the air, push the air out of the pipes, and I'll show you a way for doing that without even going inside the house, just using this uh, circulation pump uh, setup here. Let me turn on the water to the house. time to take care of the gas. We're putting a new gas flex line and adding a sediment trap at the gas control.
where the gas flakes and the sediment traps are on. Now the next thing is the water heater stopped filling up. Now we have a bunch of air trapped uh, on top of the water heater. So I like to release that air through the TMP valve. You can hear it. And the reason for that is if there was any problems with the connections, with the seals, if the system was not tight, uh, I will get uh, uh, an indication, like uh, um, the air will be uh, coming out those uh, uh, untight seals, uh, and uh, that's uh, early enough before it even, even gets wet for me to stop the water and go back and repair it. All right, right now I get water to the pressure relief valve so the air is out the next thing i'm going to do is uh, attach my drain holes right here at the drain valve the hot water to the house is on okay so this is the purpose of this setup here. While this bowl valve is off to the water heater, I'll open this. So eventually what happens is, the air that's at the end of the house will come back to that return line. The return line starts from the end of the plumbing system's hot pipes. And uh, that way I can release the air from the plumbing system without having the homeowner go through all his bathrooms and open all his uh, hot water uh, faucets and tops. So this is like 95% efficient. I can get the air out through the plumbing system this way when you have a return line. Again, as long as you put a shuttle valve between the water heater and the T for the circulation pump, keep that shuttle valve to the water heater off so you don't get water coming from the water heater and you only get water coming back to the circulation return line, you flush out the air. Let me show you. A lot of brown water came out. I went ahead and hose down that dirty uh, brown water from the driveway to make sure it doesn't leave any stains. Now we're back here, no more air. Turn off here. Remove the holes. You don't need it anymore. But right, now you can open this valve. And in fact, we're ready to uh, start the water heater. And then, uh, before we leave, we will put in the circulation pump as well. It's too early now. We have no hot water yet. Priming it a little bit. Hold down. Start clicking the, the igniter. It's really hard to tell if it has come on or not. Uh, one of the indications you, you're looking for is uh, this LED light should start blinking. But actually the flame comes on about 20 to 30 seconds before it starts blinking. So sometimes, although the, the, the pilot is on, you still keep hitting the, the button until you see the light. So here we go, I see it. Say that a hot, start from hot and then as needed you can increase it, but A or B I don't think you need any hotter than A or B. You can go all the way C or very hot. Hot is 120, A is 130, B is 140, C 150, and very hot 160 in Fahrenheit. Now, as you notice, I allowed sometimes about 20 minutes uh, since the system was pressurized to see if these supply lines will uh, leak. Uh, and you can tell right away if they, they start getting uh, wet. 
Um, you can see drips. I'm happy I don't see any of those right now. So I'm ready to go ahead and put some uh, pipe isolation on those. the screws for the straps. Okay, let me plug in the circulation pump. Make sure it works. Yes, it's spinning. Let's see how this uh, cover will fit here. Here we need to cut it a little bit. this breath for white 75 gallon water heater. I don't know why they haven't figured out something more friendly, installer friendly. It just doesn't stay in place. One more thing, the last thing, and that is the elbow for the drip pan. This is how you can tell if someone is good caring plumber. If you see an elbow of the drip pin, you can tell they put pride in their work. They did good work for you with uh, good intentions. Uh, if they don't put an ID on the pin, they're careless. Here we go, guys. We had installed a uh, 75 gallon water heater. I really need your support. Uh, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Let's grow this channel together. And with this set, I will see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.